And now our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you? Hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to rearrange this just a tad so that I can see better. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for the invitation to be with you. It's always a blessing to be amid this congregation of faithful disciples to Jesus Christ. I um, was sharing with, uh, with pastors Charles and Eric this morning that, that the Presbyterian Mission Agency is still technically on travel ban, so um, I had to get special dispensation to be with you all this morning and was very glad to be able to do that and to, to have that affirmed. By action of our church's 220th General Assembly in 2016, the PCUSA was declared a Matthew 25 church. This means that we will take upon ourselves the challenge Jesus places before us in this chapter of the gospel. The passage read this morning, as you see in the title in the bulletin, is the judgment of the nations. Now, this perspective has challenged me to engage this ad admonition in perhaps a new way. You see, Jesus said not, when I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. Rather, he said, you gave me nothing to eat. Telling us that our faith is found in the public square. Jesus was addressing political and social systems that trapped people in lives of need and desperation. What have we done to not just give a charitable handout, but what have we done to break the bonds of oppression and poverty that leave people hungry and vulnerable? 
This morning, I will share with you how we, collectively as our wider church, are answering this gospel call. The Presbyterian Mission Agency, which is the mission arm of our national church, has accepted this challenge and identified three focal areas for our work. Building a nurturing congregational vitality, not measured by the number of members or the size of the budget, but by how actively we are engaged in the communities in which we, we reside by asking this question, if we close the doors of our church tomorrow, would anyone in our community, other than our own members, recognize our absence? I would have to venture to say if that were the case for First Presbyterian Church in Santa Barbara, the answer would be yes. For over 150 years, this church has stood as witness to the gospel of Christ. Our second focal area is eradicating systemic poverty, addressing the root causes of trapping people and families in the inability to feed, clothe, and house themselves. Realities they cannot change themselves. And finally, dismantling structural racism, changing those systems and policies that oppress and discriminate against people of color. When did we see you hungry? Countless congregations across the country are engaged with local food banks, have their own food pantries, or participate in feeding programs. Yours among them. And this is wonderful work, and it is necessary to meet the immediate needs of our siblings in God's family. However, if we stop there, our work will never be done. We need to change the systemic policies and their effects that trap people in poverty and leave them unable to feed themselves or their families. Our Presbyterian Hunger Program has been engaged in a long-term partnership with the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, calling for boycotts of specific fast food chains that has resulted in migrant farmer, farm workers receiving increased wages and improved working conditions, disrupting the systems of poverty and worker abuse within that industry. We are continuing that work with more and more businesses. We are working throughout the world to change systems to empower God's people to live God's intended life of abundance. We have several mission co-workers who are serving uh, as partners with the Presbyterian Church of South Sudan. You're probably familiar with them. Building up the education system and challenging the government to engage in peace. Recognizing that education is the single best weapon in the fight against poverty. And that educating children is difficult at best and impossible at worst where there is conflict and violence. When did we see you thirsty? You remember Flint, Michigan? The Presbyterian disaster assistance provided filters for people to be able to use in their homes as the water crisis unfolded. But countless people still do not have access to clean drinking water because of decisions made by persons in positions of authority. How long can we allow oil pipelines to pollute the lands and water supplies of Native American and other vulnerable populations? Our Office of Public Witness in Washington, D.C. advocates with our elected officials to change policies that allow this kind of abuse. In partnership with the Joining Hands Network in Peru, a partner of the Presbyterian Hunger Program, the network members and mission co-workers, Jed and Jenny Kobol and Chenoa Stock, are advocating for justice for the children of La Oroyo, a community which is home to an American smelting plant that has poisoned their water. Over 97% of the children of La Oroyo have tested positive for lead poisoning. Joining Hands has been successful in encouraging the Peruvian government to enforce their own environmental laws 
and has shut down that plant until the emissions stop and the water is cleaned. However, the free trade agreements between the U.S. and South American governments allow the company to sue the Peruvian government for lost income due to the sanctions. We need to advocate for and insist upon fair trade agreements, not free trade agreements, that would put an end to this kind of abuse. When did we see you in prison? This country, arguably the wealthiest country in the world, incarcerates more people per capita than any country in the world. During the General Assembly in St. Louis in 2018, our leaders, commissioners, and others marched from the Assembly Convention Center to the Justice Center to protest the discriminatory system of cash bail. Nearly $50,000 from the opening worship offering was presented to an organization which offers bail to those who are awaiting arraignment and are unable to post it for themselves. They haven't been found guilty of anything at this point. But at that point, they have, been, they have had their jobs endangered, which could lead to homelessness for them and their families. Another one of those systemic policies that perpetuates poverty. Our church is calling for the end to the cash bail system throughout our country. When did we see you a stranger? When did we take children from their parents because you don't belong here? My family has welcomed a young man, his name is Misael, from Honduras, who is seeking asylum in the United States. He left his home and family when he was 15 years old, fleeing threats against his life and the lives of his family members should he fail to join the gangs. He spent three years making his way across Mexico and presented himself at the U.S. border for asylum. He has passed his credible threat assessment, meaning that he does have a, a, a danger returning to his home country, and he is legally in the asylum process, a process that will take at least another two years. A few months ago, his uncle, a mayor of Intibuca, and an advocate for environmental justice and women's rights was stabbed to death in his home. His wife and two young children were also attacked, but survived. Even though Misael would much rather go home and live with his family and be with his friends, this is the reality for him in Honduras. A new mission coworker position was approved by our General Assembly but has been delayed by the pandemic. It will reside in San Salvador and work with churches, governments, and other organizations to address the root causes of violence and famine in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, reasons that are forcing people to migrate from their homes, seeking not just a better life, but survival in America. This work will be done in concert with the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, who has been offering relief for those seeking asylum and caught in the system, both in this country and across the border. People might, like Misael, who would much rather go home to family and friends and country. PDA is working with partners in Haiti in relief efforts for the many who are experiencing loss and trauma from the recent earthquakes, sub subsequent tropical storms, and the political violence there, and also in resettlement efforts for refugees from Afghanistan. The Presbyterian Mission Agency, or the Presbyterian Center, which also houses the Office of General Assembly in Louisville, has actually adopted an, a, a refugee family in Louisville and is supporting them. When did we see you, Jesus? Our church, your church, is doing much, but there is so much yet to do. We must first make ourselves aware of the plight of God's people, our sisters, brothers, siblings, who are all God's beloved. 
our faith is lived out in the public square. The church is called to be political. Yes, I said it, political, not partisan, but political just as Jesus was. Following Jesus, we are called to speak truth to power, working to change systems and policies that oppress the least of us, those whose society has left behind, those who cannot within the system ever break their yoke. And we need to acknowledge and to testify that by including others in systems of privilege will not cause those of us who already participate to truly lose anything. We must recognize and acknowledge, in the words of Amanda Gorman, the National Youth po Poet Laureate who spoke at this uh, recent presidential inauguration when she said, that the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. We are called by God to change what just is. We believe in a God of abundance, and it will be experienced when we answer Christ's call. Christ is calling us to action. Your congregation should remain engaged with the work of PMA through our four special offerings, which support all of the ministries that I have described here today. And I encourage us to engage the, me the message in Isaiah 58, where the prophet says, is this not the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. When did we see you, Jesus? How can we fast from the systems that favor some over others? How can we recognize the hungry, the thirsty, the homeless, the stranger, the imprisoned, and act in a way that will break every yoke of oppression? Continue the work of your congregation, the hands-on assistance for urgent needs, then also discern your call to advocate for policy and systems change. This work is not easy, my friends, nor will it be quick. But God calls us to do the work that will be long-lasting and will bring life and bring it abundantly for all God's people. May it be so.